Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of CSGO News. I hope you all enjoyed today's news section. Let's get right into it. Our first story today comes from Jericho, a pretty well-known CSGO YouTuber as well as a Twitch streamer. And actually a couple days ago, he reached Leet number of total views on Twitch. And why this is significant is because Leet is a well-known number in the gaming community. And I, all, I wanted to share that with you. So I hope you all enjoyed that news story. Also on top of that, it was Jericho's birthday, I believe it was two days ago, and he received huge feedback, not only on his YouTube channel, but also mainly on his Twitch channel. He received a lot of donations, and he came out on Twitter, and uh, he just really wanted to thank all of his supporters. So big shout out to you, Jericho. You seem like a great guy. One of those iconic guys on YouTube where his laugh and his voice are just really well known. So you guys have never heard of him, please check him out. Great CSGO YouTuber as well as a Twitch streamer. And congrats again to your birthday as well as your elite views. In more important news though, as the news stories build, they're going to get more important guys, so trust me, I'm not going to just share everyone's birthdays in the future. More important though, the copyright movement has still struck another YouTuber, and then this time it was McSkillet, he took to Twitter. Feel free to pause the video if you guys want to really look at this stuff, it's way above my pay grade, I mean, I don't know what most of this stuff means, but here it is and actually said that Nintendo, I don't know how Nintendo's involved with CSGO, actually took down his Mediafire video. Um, if you guys aren't a user on Mediafire, he posted this video on how to actually construct your own custom bomb code. He also uploaded a YouTube video about this a long time ago, about how on CSGO, when you plant the bomb, you can actually choose the number combination you choose that shows up on your screen. So he uploaded this video also to Mediafire, and somehow Nintendo got the code taken down and gave him a copyright strike on Mediafire. Now, I don't think this goes over to YouTube, I'm not really sure how this all works out, um, but he did take to Twitter arguing about that. And again, it's just one of those really weird things because the copyright movement on YouTube has been insane lately. I mean, you know, you put React in the video, you get flagged for 67 different things. Um, it's really taken a weird movement when people are starting to copyright the most, the most random things that we don't even know about. So although he wasn't struck down on YouTube, he was still struck down on another video source website. So I wanted to share all that news with you. And again, McSkilled, a great YouTuber that many of you guys know, um, he didn't seem to upset about it. Obviously, it's nothing too big of a deal, but that did happen this weekend. Another rekindled story is the continued Twitter fight between Thorn and Semler. And at this point, I don't know who to support. I mean, Thorn, I really like the guy because I know more about him. Um, obviously, in the comment section last time when I talked about this, um, I knew Thorn more because I watch his YouTube videos. But at this point, I'm starting to feel a little bad for Semler. Thorn did tweet out some of the things again at Semler. He said, I believe, quote unquote, um, at Semler's company, the janitor would receive employee of the month every single month. I mean, dang, Thorin, you are, look at, you're a savage. This came out of nowhere, it was a few days later. As you guys know, my first CSGO news video covered their fight, or my second one actually, and that was a few days ago. So I don't know if Thorin is just really good at holding grudges, or what rekindled this. I don't know what Semler is doing off Twitter, but it seems like Thorin is still really provoked by something, and I'm not sure quite that, quite what it is yet. Also, another big news, Thorin tweeted out yet again, um, you know, he always seems to make my news stories because he's such an interesting, interesting guy. He tweeted out this time, quote unquote, banned from all events. And then he goes on to list off all the events where he's supposedly banned from. So by some miracle, Thorin and Counterpit Land Finals, they didn't really get the memo that Thorin was apparently... Uh, you know, banned from all CSGO Comcasting events. Uh, it's kind of funny, he lists off all the events that have banned him, apparently permanently, which is really unfortunate because MLG is one of those listed uh, events, and I would have loved to see Thorne actually on one of those panels for MLG Columbus in the next two weeks or so. But again, I don't know how Thorne does it. He's a great Comcaster. Again, um, I'm not really sure why he got banned. I'll look into that more in the future. I know you guys probably all know how. Um, I know on air, he's definitely one of those guys that doesn't really hold back. But again, it's really great to see how some little, little events, I, I know Counterpit's not a little event, but some off events away from all those other ones are letting uh, Thorne back onto Comcast. And it's great to see. He's definitely more reserved on camera. You know, the, the little bit that I've watched so far today of Counterpit, he's a little more reserved than usual, but it's still nice to see his face. That sounds like I have a crush on him. I don't. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Also, in the in the news this past week, in an important two-match series of NIP versus Fnatic, NIP actually took down Fnatic, I believe it was 16-6 to on cash. A very convincing victory, um, and it was pretty awesome to see the pajamas coming back. I don't know why I just said pajamas, could have said ninjas, but <laughs> pajamas sounds so much cooler. But it was also funny, Fnatic didn't take it too hard. They came back in Game 2, actually took Game 2, and actually after they lost Game 1, JW on Fnatic took it as a, a great time to tag his spot sponsor in a Twitter post as follows. Lel, forgot to drink my Monster Gaming. I will drink one now. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Unleash the pig. Was that like a fat joke? 
It's an interesting point to point out that Fnatic has been 16-2 in their last 18 games, not including this past series, so all of a sudden dropping a game to NIP pretty convincingly is kind of a worrying thing before MLG. You guys can see that they're definitely not the team they used to be, or I mean, maybe the nerves are getting to them. Again, I probably shouldn't be saying this kind of stuff. Anything can happen when it comes to MLG Columbus, but it's interesting to see a top team losing a game to NIP, of course a top team as well, but so convincingly. So you're wondering what's going on, if they're going to try and change up strategies, if, if they don't want to show any certain strategies, or maybe they're trying to lose on purpose you never really know what teams are actually going to do because again it's just a pro league match it has really no big effects besides the points which Fnatic has plenty of so you don't know if they're trying to throw things or just not show certain strategies on certain maps such as cash it's kind of cool to see the backside of that which we will never know the truth behind uh, in other North American news Cloud9 celebrated on Twitter that they took a sweep 2-0 over Team Renegades whoop de doo yep as you can tell, I'm not completely convinced on Cloud9. I really don't know where this team is at. Um, again, they did 2-0 sweet Renegades, but you all know Renegades is not a top-tier team, um, at least as of now. So uh, I know it's a great thing to be celebrating. They, they are slowly boosting that morale. But again, going into MLG where you're facing off against at least 8 of the top 10 teams in the world, it's kind of a, a sad victory when it comes to comparing that. But again, they're building up. Go Cloud9. I'm cheering for you. Hope you make out a group stage, which you probably won't. <sighs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Thorin, our good friend, back again in the news, has lost all of his sanity at the Counter Pit LAN event. Uh, you can tell by this picture he tweeted out. What are you doing, Thorin? Oh man, mama, give me some of that turkey and ham that Thorin's been having. This guy, holy, look at that smile. I, I don't think Counter Pit's going too well, guys. Apparently the production's pretty terrible. Uh, the stream just shut down again and everyone is freaking out, so... I'm sitting here at a kitchen table recording this on my phone. I know it looks like a potato, but yeah, everyone's everyone's freaking out. Yep. I was actually waiting for Counter Pit Land Finals or the actual group stage, um, the opening matches to finish off. That's where all the upset teams were playing the bigger teams. You know, you have teams like Flipside Tactics playing Navi. You have Immunity playing Virtus Pro. All these lower teams. I think Torpedo is playing some team. NRG. The teams you never heard of are playing top tier teams. I'm currently sitting here waiting for this to finish to finish this video. Um, I'm not sure it's going to finish though at this point. Counter Pit's production quality has been terrible. Everyone's ranting about it not only on Twitch but also on Twitter. So. So I'm going to sit here for the next couple hours. Hopefully it does finish off and uh, we can finish this video. I'm just searching for some CSGO news though. This video brought to you by my sponsor, me. Okay. In other news, uh, some awesome stuff happened today. It finally happened. So let me, you know, report on it. Here we go. New MLG stickers collections was somehow released. I don't know. McSkillet tweeted about it. I saw it. I clicked on it. Pretty cool stickers. I'm not a big sticker fan. There you go. Other words, one of the best looking teams going into MLG Columbus in the next two weeks is probably G2 Esports. They faced off against FaZe Clan today and swept them 2-0 in a series. And actually, not too convincingly, there were some close games, but still a 2-0 sweep of FaZe Clan means G2 is looking amazing. One of the reasons why I actually waited until today to release this video was because I was waiting for a counter pit quarterfinal upset. You know, all those lesser teams were actually playing top tier teams. Flipside Tactics almost pulled off that upset. They were able to take one map away from Navi, but it actually finished 2-1 in Navi's favor. Still, great shout out to Shara and World Edit from Flipside Tactics. They had spectacular games in one of their wins. That is actually all I have for all of you today in CSGO news. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, leave a comment down below. What did you guys enjoy about the show? What can I do to improve it? Obviously, I mean, I'm in these random rooms. I don't have the best, you know, surroundings for making CSGO news videos. But I hope you guys all enjoy the content, the information I tossed to all of you through the, through the screen. That was stupid. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you, and I'll see you all next time in a couple of days with another CSGO News video. And uh, I have some good stuff coming for you guys. Some really good stuff. Oh, yeah. I'll see you all next time.